Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today, I'm going to talk about analog one last time, and then we're going to do some digital stuff. But I wanted to talk about uh, thermocouple amplifiers. Thermocouples, two dissimilar metals touching each other. We know this, right? Uh, last time we were talking about instrumentation amps, and I mentioned strain gauges, and you won't have a lot of chance to use that, maybe, depending on what business you're in, what your hobbies are in. You probably won't be hooking it to an Arduino anytime soon to measure the strain of a bridge or something, or a scale. You can make a scale. Um, so what I did is I made a little circuit board to show the thermocouple effect. I'm going to show you the, the schematic that I pulled it from, and then uh, let's talk about the theory of operation. So after the last, uh, the last video on instrumentation amplifiers, I had thought to do uh, a video on the zero drift technology, the chopper stabilized, reference stabilized, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think I'm going to hold off on that a little bit. I'm actually going to get some uh, information from the vendors themselves, and uh, maybe I can approach that and speak to it more intelligently. So, but one of the things I came across while uh, looking at zero drift amplifiers, zero drift for temperature, that is, is this. So I'm looking at one of Linear Technologies operational amplifiers at zero drift. And uh, they had a nice little circuit on the bottom here for a thermocouple amplifier, two parts. So here is a blow up of that little uh, circuit diagram off of the data sheet. And we've got a, uh, you know, our zero drift instrumentation amplifier. Uh, and zero drift, a lot of times, means zero drift with temperature effects. And that, that's good if we're trying to measure temperature. So that makes sense that they would put this uh, kind of circuit on that data sheet. And uh, we see a type K thermocouple, which is a lot of times this real common one you see. We'll talk about these a little bit more. And then there is a cold junction compensator, the LT1025 here. And so if we look at the circuit I made, there's two chips and here's our amplifier. Here's this cold temperature, uh, uh, cold junction compensator. Let me talk about that some more. Now, a, a problem with just hooking up something like this to an amplifier would still be one of calibration. Um, and if you were to take something like this and stick it in ice water and then zero out your uh, scale, then you, you, would have a, you would know the change in temperature from zero degrees. Well, the uh, thermocouple cold junction amplifier thing we're talking about, what that does is uh, do that, it does that calibration for us. Uh, uh, and it uh, first gives us an output based on the type of thermocouple we're using. We're using type K, which is real common. Again, two and a half dollars. Um, which changes its voltage 40.6 microvolts per degree C. There's a slight range in there, but that's what they're showing. There's also some nonlinearity, uh, uh, kind of a kind of probably a sag in the voltage, so they make up for it. And what this really is is a second thermometer. Here's one thermometer, the, the thermocouple itself, and then here's a reference thermometer. Think of it that way. When it's pre-shaping, I don't want to say pre-emphasizing, like audio, but when we're pre-shaping the voltage based on the room temperature, or what they call the cold temperature, and then we measure the voltage of the hot temperature, or what, or what the probe itself is saying, then we subtract those two and that gives us the temperature of this above uh, our cold temperature. You might ask, why not just use this chip if it's a thermometer? And, and you could, but, but this thing can stand a lot more hostile environment than than the chip itself. So um, one of the reasons also it you know can sit on the end of a long cord. So the output of this, in addition to knowing where zero volts is or zero, I'm sorry, zero, a reference temperature is um, in general. So the output makes sense to us on a voltmeter, for example. It also scales it for the different thermocouples. We're using a Type K, very cheap. Uh, very common, 40 microvolts per degree C. So for every uh, degree C the thermocouple sees, the voltage will change this much. Different thermocouples, different amounts, and then this actually has a reference output of 10 millivolts per degree C. So you could just create uh, a, your own circuit based on, uh, on a nice, easy-to-use decimal number. So while I was uh, looking at the uh, cold junction compensator, uh, I came across this right here. And this is a, a uh, matched, it's, it's a kit of a matched junction compensator and a matched amplifier. And uh, then they even give us the ability to do some trimming and stuff because, hey, now we're in accuracy. Uh, but this is essentially uh, the chipset I use to do this little design I'm going to show you here. 
So was, here's the little circuit board as built. And what I did was I brought out the different taps for the different kind of thermal couples. So we are a K-type, as, as I mentioned earlier. That's It's a very common type, very cheap. Um, but if you remember on the data sheet, we had these taps for these different ones. And, and so I just went ahead and brought them out. Also, I brought out a ground and some other things. And this is telling us that it's 18 degrees C uh, here in the lab, which is about 65 degrees. And, and that's close. Uh, it's, it's off by a few degrees. Uh, mostly because I didn't have the exact 1% um, resistor in stock and I wasn't going to build an adjuster into this um, for, for just this little demonstration here today. So, uh, nice. So you, you could take this and now feed this into uh, the AD converter on your favorite uh, microcontroller and you've got yourself a thermocouple amplifier that will read out in millivolts uh, per degree C. Now I'm going to show you a trick from the old days um, that's still still valuable if you need to use it, which is that a regular old silicon diode, 1 in 914 diode, has a temperature coefficient of 4 millivolts per degree C. So if you figure that you had an amplifier up here and you, you needed 8 millivolts per degree C or 2 millivolts, you would calculate the resistor that gets fed into it and uh, uh, create your own and polarity. You would you would change the polarity on on which way this is going to create your uh, uh, your own temperature coefficient based voltage that would correct for the temperature of the circuit. And we used to do this in our digital scales. In the last video, I did stick the scope probe on the output of the instrumentation amp, uh, running more gain than was here. But you you know, with that said, there was no filtering either. So you did see a lot of, uh, you know, some, some of the noise getting in that you would expect. And again, laying on the bench. So here we did have two poles of filtering going on. And uh, you don't see the high frequency artifacts that we saw before. But you do see some low frequency stuff. You see the 60 hertz that's all around us. And in this case, the thermal couple itself is unshielded. It's a pair of wires, a couple feet, you know, long twisted at the ends laying on the workbench so uh and actually if i were to touch the very tip of the probe uh you'd see the 60 hertz jump up much like you do when you touch a scope probe so if we had to we could shield it and we could go in with a two hertz pole filter or i mean i'm sorry a two hertz filter and uh, we could go after this if we really wanted to so this video was a bit of a quickie but i did want to show you a, a, a quick use of an instrumentation amplifier and make you aware of the cold junction compensator and the fact that you needed a cold junction compensate. Uh, it, but again, it, I think it was just a, a nice little add-on use and it actually showed a, a time when uh, having an amplifier that didn't respond to temperature was useful when measuring temperatures. So uh, I might read this board, throw it up on uh, uh, Tindy or leave, leave it as open source through Oshpark or something like that. Uh, a cute little way to take a pair of dissimilar metals and be able to measure it with an Arduino. So Bill Hurd from Hackaday, uh, we'll catch you on the next video. I'm hoping to get back into some CPLDs, PLDs, some FPGAs. Actually, I've got a couple PLD projects, and maybe we'll talk about switching hazards or something cool there. So Bill Hurd from Hackaday, have a good one.